So welcome to um, CNCF con SIG Contributor Strategy Meeting. Um, as usual, we are under the CNCF Code of Conduct, so be excellent to each other. Um, this one got organized, is getting organized a little um, uh, last minute. So if anybody has additional items for discussion, please add them to the agenda there. Let me paste it into the chat again. Um, there we go. And um, with that, let's get started with discussion. Um, we do not have any new people here. So it seems like we can skip the round of introductions since we all see each other fairly frequently. The, um... Oh, hey, Karen. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a voice, I swear. Yep. The, um, so, um, and, um, okay, we're just getting started. The, um, if you have anything additional for the agenda, um, please add it. The, um, and so introductions being skipped. Um, the, um, let's move on. So one of the things that's come up in um, the, we had this discussion, started this discussion on Contributor Growth Working Group, but it really needs to be in the main meeting here, which is um, we're busy generating a lot of content um, via contributor strategy. And one of the questions is, what is our publication path for the various kinds of content? I mean, for the templates, it's obvious, right? We just update the main branch of the templates repository and anything that's in the main branch is basically done. Am I correct with that, Carolyn? Yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't really published anything yet. <laughs> okay. So I, I wouldn't say we have a process either. Um, but for other stuff like um, feedback and additional material and requirements, um, uh, the various advisory documents, um, you know, in terms of, you know, hey, here's how to select project here's ways to select project leadership, et cetera, that we've been busy writing, you know, what's the path to go from work draft slash work in progress to this is a official resource for the CNCF. Um, and, and none of that has been defined. Josh, you just made me realize that the project template repo was made before master main switch. So this afternoon, I'll fix that. Okay. Yeah, so just a note for project, uh, for uh, repo switches in general. Um, I think GitHub is going to officially switch that stuff over uh, starting on October 1st. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were actually talking about this in the uh, GitHub uh, management meeting in Kubernetes earlier today. And yes, <laughs> you should switch the template. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just doesn't have anything in it. I think we just made, I mean, it has like what a readme and stuff. Um, I think it's just we made the repo before, you saying they're gonna switch the default? Is that what it is on October 1st? Uh, no, it'll be switch, the default will become main. Yeah, as of great. October first. Yeah, um, but more. that's only for that's only for net new repositories, not existing ones. So okay. we want to make sure that that's changed for the the template. Perfect. All right. Well, I'll get it fixed this afternoon. So Yay. before we start making PRs. Okay. So. So do we want to actually talk about 
how we transition documentation. Yeah. Um, so we had also mentioned this a little uh, uh, discussion from working group naming and, and Kubernetes. Um, yeah. Our general idea was, at least for our documentation specifically, um, was providing a set of recommendations, right, and a very controlled space. So whether it be a repo, subdirectory, somewhere um, that will eventually be proposed to some body in the CNCF, maybe that, uh, maybe we call that the TFC, and. Um, and then at the point at which that higher body approves the documentation for use across uh, the project or foundation, um, we'd move it into somewhere more official. So maybe that is contribute, maybe that is the CNCF uh, foundation repo, I think foundation is yeah. the name of it. Um, so there are a few options, um, but we do want to make sure that like the documentation that we say is like under review. Do we want to have a separate under review section um, that eventually gets graduated um, or a set of uh, decisions to potentially make like these are these are in review. These are newly proposed. These are these are graduated decisions and now live in some canonical place. Yeah, and and that's something I'm particularly for requirements material that very definitely needs to have an official approval chain. Um, I mean, advice is advice. And it's really it's more important for it just to be noted which items are finished rather than which items are approved, if you follow me. Because mm -hmm. cause it's not like, you know, it's not like we're going to cause major political problems um, uh, with with general advice. The um, But um, knowing the TOC, I will say we will get a lot further if we come to them and we suggest a specific path than say, where do you want us to put this? Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I'm not, I'm not sure what makes sense because I feel like we don't, like, we don't already have a place within the CNCF where this sort of content would live that I know of. Well, I mean, you could always put it in like the TOC repo under the SIGs. Um, it could probably go under process, but um, use more words about what kind of content we are thinking about. So things like, you know, things like, you know, we've got within governance, we have documents on uh, ways to select project leadership, you know, and another one on, um, um, uh, you know, on basic forms of governance. Um, and uh, within contributor growth, we have one on how to build a contributor ladder. Um, the, um, so, you know, those are the advisory documents. Um, you know, so the, um, I think the requirements, so requirements would require a small structural change. The requirements would at least right now go under the TOC directory because that's where the sort of general requirements documents are. Um, the uh, concern about that would be that those would need to turn into directories instead of single documents because right now they're single documents. Right, right now there's this omnibus document that is project maturity. I, I forget exactly what the file name is within CNCF that covers the whole maturity cycle um, and it doesn't make sense to make that single document 150 pages long in order to include all of the backing material that we will eventually generate. Um, so, um, you know, so we'll need to approach the TOC with the idea that, hey, this should actually be a directory um, with multiple different documents. Um, in the meantime, couldn't it just yeah. go in like your own repo? Don't you have a repo? Yes, we do. Yeah, then like, work in there and then have the proposal process kind of move out to the TOC when you're ready. It's already in our own repo. Okay. My ho this whole discussion is what happens next. Ah, so when, when, when you are ready to be able to publish things, um, if you want, well, okay, I'll let con discussion continue because I have like a possible place to be able to surface this for. So I guess for the, so because it's in the repo, it's technically published already. What we want is the, once it has been 
approved or ratified or you know becomes law where should it live right maybe that's toc do we feel that the toc repo is the most representative of where we want this information to be yeah i don't know i mean i feel like didn't wasn't there some discussion of a contribute repo does that actually exist yeah, so there's a contribute repo, there's a foundation repo. I feel like some of the things that we're proposing are not, uh, are maybe not either of those. We were maybe this told is a new to repo. Don't put our stuff in the contribute repo. I already approached people about this. Yeah. I'll also say this that it's kind of awkward and undiscoverable to have just a bunch of random markdown files in a GitHub repo. Yeah. Um, One thing nice to have something that's uh, collected together and actually published like a website as opposed to, like I said, just here's some markdown files, have fun reading them. You'll never find them if they're just randomly in the TOC repo, unless you are already heavily involved in everything and knew where they were to begin with. Yeah, so I would, I would say yeah, I that. Thinking, um, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, if you look at what the to do group has done with some of their guides, they've, you know, they've, they're all in, in the repo and they've got, um, you know, that's where all the development happened, but then they have like a guides section on the website that has all of the all of the guides in a place where you can easily find them and you don't have to dig through a repository. So I would say that um, Markdown is easiest for a lot of us, um, just code contribution wise, but there's nothing stopping us from, and we have resources on the CNCF level to help us create websites via Netlify that can be attached to the repo, so. Oh yeah, I was totally wasn't like bashing Markdown. I was just saying, random files in a listing on GitHub is more what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. Oh, I had one more thing about when we're having documents that aren't published already. Um, I would suggest maybe we also put something in the document itself saying that it's not published and done yet. It's still draft. Just having it in a folder on our GitHub repo, this is the folder path is draft. I think it's pretty subtle for some people and they may find it and then think it's real and not know our convention that, that well, it's in a folder called draft. Like it's pretty easy to overlook a URL like that. I think it'd be useful on our part to put a one line header at the top of these files and say, this is a draft, this is a whatever, it's pending, it's not, not really yet, it's not published. Mm -hmm. The, um, Of course, I guarantee that that ends up with a circumstance where when we move it to wherever it gets published to a site, that one of our constant tasks will be, oh, wait, we need to remove the draft header. The, um, so. You could change okay. the name of the doc directory to just say draft docs or something like that. That way it's kind of in one place and then all the docs we put underneath it. I don't know if so, people would miss that, but. Yeah, so what Carolyn was saying was, cause I had suggested like in review and, and, and draft, but like if it's in the, if it's in the directory link, it's a lot le more likely to get missed versus inside of the document, right? Yeah, you're just relying on people to know our own internal things. Like we all know that it's a draft and it doesn't mean anything and hasn't been adopted. But to someone who stumbled upon it, they don't really know how official it is, what it means, is it going to be adopted in a week, things like that. Like, I'm just trying to convey, like, I see this stuff all the time when I'm trying to watch what's happening in the TOC repo and understanding how official things are and where it's going and, like, when is it going to happen? And just having something 
written down in like full sentences somewhere in the doc is super helpful. So I think what might be cool is that as we publish things into this newfangled place that it's going to live, um, that we start removing them from the repo as well, right? And we can maybe tabulate a, like these are lists of decisions that we've made, right? And this is where the final decision guidance lives, right? Um, that way there's no duplication of content. And like, yeah, we have to, we'll have to strip a draft header once, but like, I think we can live with that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think it needs to be anything more than italicized text at the top of the document that says this document is currently under review. Yeah. The, um, so, um, okay. The, um, so I guess my question is, do we want to propose basically a new site for this, or do we want to propose that this lives somewhere under cncf.io? Both, I think the I think CNCF I, I think with a new Netlify site that should be fairly easy to if CNCF.io is already Netlified, which it probably is, um, to stick a, a link into a different repo reference, right? So that content can live in one repo, but it can the site can link out to it. So I think we we do some of that across Kubernetes already as well. I think it can just be its own Netlify site, but then a different subdomain or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 Should we bike shed over names? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any content yet. So this is really the part of the yeah. <laughs> the um I was trying to come up with some really tortured version of CNCF contribute that would maybe involve a numeral somewhere, but the um <laughs> seven 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 ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um so yep yeah I mean the other thing I'm thinking about and maybe Amy can weigh in here is that there might be some painful restrictions on putting anything under cncf.io slash. Um, Subdomain is going to be a lot easier. Um, that'll yeah. take like zero time. Getting something up on cncf.io proper is going to be challenging. So, so what about just proposing that we use contribute.cncf.io? Yeah, we can we can do like a redirect towards like whatever we want for that. Um, it can go towards yeah, Netlify. It can do like something like that. Ehor, is there anything in here that I would that I am not aware of that would cause this to be a problem? No, I'm not sure. Again, as, as you mentioned, it's uh, it's way easier to set up the uh, dedicated subdomain for something at cncf.io and to have it redirected or to use the existing con uh, contribute.cncf.io subdomain. But it will be uh, even difficult and I'm not sure, uh, completely I'm not sure if there is a strong purpose to do something under cncf.io slash something. Okay, I'm, I'm good with a subdomain. The, um, um, and, and as you I've know, noted in chat, the contribute okay. CNCFIO already just points to the repo, so we can figure out how to be able to, like, wherever else you want this to be. The easiest way here is to try to set up the GitHub pages, uh, which are pointing to the contribute repo. And in this case, this, this can also solve both things. Uh, as Steven mentioned, it's easier for folks to contribute if you are contributing something and uh, people have experience with Git, so it's easier to contribute content where we are Git, we are GitHub as a code. And if this repo is set up as the, as the GitHub pages, it will appear there automatically. So that, that's probably the easiest way to handle the things. Okay. So I'm, I, at some point I want to bike shed because I'm not sure that contribute maybe is representative of what we, what the content is. And that also already points to that other contribute repo 
and not to the contributor strategy, say, Grupo? So, yeah, so like my question would be like the, what's the, of, is there an eventual intention for that contribute repo? I see that like right now it's kind of a listing of the, just the projects, right? Um, do we, what I'm imagining is the, the CNCF version of the community repo, right? The streets <laughs> of the, the Kubernetes community repo. Um, Carolyn is saying strategy.cncf.io and I'm pretty on board with that. <laughs> You're, you're free to update, so submit your PRs with or open the issues in the contributory repo if you want to see some different content there or if you want to submit a direct, direct PRs with your proposals, so please do it. You're welcome to cool. do it. Cool, cool. Okay. Wait, so are we going to use contribute.cncf.io or are we not? sounds like initially we're not, but maybe there is a point at which the content converges. So where would we put it if not there? I mean, if you're going to bike shit, you have to actually make a proposal. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking like some of it is it's, it's guidelines. Some of it is advisory. Like I, I, worry about choosing a name that is uh, like, I, I think the name should be descriptive enough that we know what we're getting out of it, walking into it, right? If, if someone ends up in our, if someone ends up in our repo, I think it is valuable for us to put something of a uh, note that the content herein is advisory and not officially ratified by some CNCF body, yada, 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 um, for things that we have, you know, things that we have discussed on the TSC level, go here. Um, I don't know what to call here yet. We can cross-link, uh, we, we, can, we can explicitly mention the C contributor strategy on uh, within the contributors repo readme. So uh, like just to mention that there is some extra advisor content available at the C contributor strategy repo that you can you can also be interested in. If you don't want to put everything into the same place too. Alternatively, we could rename our repo to something and let our repo content kind of shift around the directories and let our repo content be, you know, if you want to see drafts of, of the things that we're working on, go here. If you want to see things that have been officially approved by the TOC, go here. Um, so, so I'm still stuck on the, where is that second go here? Uh, the go here, if it was to just be our repo, the go here would just be a subdirectory in the repo. No, we, we've already established that putting but, stuff in a repo is bad. Well, this this repo are specifically our repo. No, 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 no. We've we've already established that final content should live on some sort of an indexable website and not just in a GitHub repo. But what we're also talking about is creating a Netlify site so that that content is indexable, so that that right. Netlify site content would live in a repo. So we're yes. still talking about repos. We're just talking about a different presentation mechanism. Right, right. But I'm asking, what is the Netlify site? Because the suggestion Still was contribute.cncf.io. Yeah. You said, I don't like that, but you didn't have a counter proposal. Uh, I, the only reason I don't like it is because it currently points to a list of all of the projects, right? So yeah. if we are but, going to decide, if we're going to decide that the published content should live in the contribute repo, then totally fine. But are, are we sure that contribute is the, like, is the name that we want it to be? I don't the more know. you talk about it, the more unsure I am about that. Because to me, like you think about like the contribute.md files that you see on, on GitHub, that's about how to contribute to a project. And that's kind of what this contribute repo already has. So it's, you know, how are you interested in contributing to one of the CNCF hosted projects? And here's a big list of projects you can contribute to. And what we're talking about more is, I don't know, sort of. I, I have a project. Different, what do right? I do? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, we, we can easily mention that as well. So if you go to, if you, if you walk through the contribute report, uh, in the bottom you'll notice that we are not, not on, only mentioning CNCF projects there, but also some different ways of how can you contribute to, um, to CNCF ecosystem. So the original intention of this report was to just to put just to have the single point of reference on how can you be useful in the Kubernetes community. You can start with contributing to projects. You can also do, um, you can contribute to uh, at the TOC level, like to be the TOC contributor. You can contribute to the community, to the ecosystem, like running the meetups, running the community groups, being an ambassador and so on. So the original goal of developing this trip is just to have all the useful links on how to get started with this in a single place. It's not only about projects, it's about all the all the useful links, and we can definitely restructure that if if you have different suggestions or better plan on how can you be structured. Yeah. So I think I think that the you know a lot of the content is going to be geared towards um, maintainers or people looking for maintainership. We had talked about maintainers.cncf.io before. Right now, that redirects to just the Google Sheet, and I think that a link to the Google Sheet could just as easily live in this new repo. Yeah, because a lot of our guides are going to be more about how to how to set up governance, how to measure whether you're successful or not. It's not really how to contribute to things. It's really how to set up your project for success from a contribution standpoint, which I feel is is different. Getting back to what Josh said, I'm I'm not proposing it. I, I can't think of anything better. Um, this is my problem. I feel like contributes not right, but I'm struggling to find something better. So let's do maintainers unless people have objections. I'm going to caution against that because maintainers CNCFIO is baked into some other stuff as they redirect that Google sheet. Sorry. How badly and, baked? And, uh, enough. Deeply baked. Try something else. Yeah. That's a really good one. <laughs> well, so part of the reason that we end up like hearing a lot about it is that we're really maintainers focused. Do you want to try to be able to look at like how to be able to build community? Um, thinking about like projects in CFIO. Like maintainers is already claimed. Sorry. Let's find so, something well, else. I mean, but previously we had discussed that like is maintainers even super useful having this displayed as a Google sheet, right? Ideally, yep. ideally as a maintainer, as I'm onboarding a, uh, a new project for the CNCF, hopefully the process, I'd imagine the process eventually getting to simpler points where you're putting, you know, you're essentially putting stuff into a, a YAML file. Love, love YAML, right? And, and running some script and that, uh, you know, and that's generating a, uh, you know, that's generating a new list of maintainers or updated list of maintainers. Think the, you know, running make generate on the Kubernetes community uh, repo, right? When you update the, the sigs.yaml, sigs right? Um, this sheet is not super useful and it will continue to get long. Other as... reasons why the sheet needs to be under maintainers. Um... Let's let's move on. Yeah. Okay. D. Or more importantly, do we really want this to potentially get hung up on the CNCF slash LF website team doing a bunch of cleanup? Uh, no. Um, but since back to back to your point, um, someone suggests something better. Yeah. <laughs> the. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem is that some of the obvious ones, which would be like project management, are awkward. Um, yeah, so yeah. I think we should go to our respective uh, corners and strategize about it. Um, and let's maybe move on because we've got like uh, other updates. We can bike shed maybe in the next meeting. Okay, take this on Slack, et cetera. The um, later okay. games. Uh, uh, just just to close the discussion with contributors. Sorry for, for interrupting, Josh. So if you uh, if you have any suggestions on the on the currently existing repo, was the person who originally uh, was building it from mostly from scratch. So I'm happy to collaborate with you if you have any specific items for what can we implement there. So just let me know. Sounds good. 
Yeah, the, um, okay. So, um, working group updates. Um, I see that somebody's typing stuff in for contributor growth. So do you want to say that out loud? No, no, of course not. Um, I've submitted a template to our project template, if people could take a look at it. Um, again, the goal for these is we stop doing Git, I'm sorry, Google Docs, and we just start doing PRs for everything. And um, if people want to do more changes on top of them, we'll encourage pull requests instead of endlessly asking one person to do the edits for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Paris is working on, no, I think, yeah, Paris is in here. She's working on community management documents, um, like how to contribute, uh, recruit contributors. Um, and I'm working on taking the good first issue guide that I wrote for Kubernetes and refreshing it and making it not specific to Kubernetes workflows uh, so we can put it up at the CNCF level. That's it. Okay. Um, this is good. So Paris has dropped in a bunch of stuff about maintainer circle. Um, should, should I spooky ghost for her? Or? Yes. Yeah. Particularly <laughs> if you actually understand what that first item is about, because I don't quite. So actually, Amy might have more context than I would. Well, I can um, speak like, to some of yeah. this. <laughs> it's like rise up out of the deep again. So um, here's the thing. Paris wants to be able to actually do a survey about, um, you know, being able to get people to register for the maintainer circle piece in here. I have looked at the calendars and there is a lot going on in here. So like adding in another meeting is probably not going to be as relevant. My suggestion was taking one of the normal contributor strategy meetings and putting maintainer circle in here. And correct me, was, was this actually the plan in the first place? This was the plan, yes. Um, so not, not under the guise of maintainer circle specifically, but uh, an opportunity for maintainers to come by and ask us questions if they had it, which I guess is the same as maintainer circle, right? So, um, so yeah, we should, <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> and and the, uh, the thing is, she wanted to be able to have registration. In order for it to work for China, we need to be able to do it through a survey monkey. That is the question in here. I say maybe we just start doing it. Okay. As uh, you know, as one of our meetings, if we, because we can slow roll a survey and say like, if this time does not work for you, then maybe we can discuss another one. Yeah. But I think we should at least try it in our meetings first before. Another goal on. here is to be able to do like breakout for like ten people breakout groups based on the amount of um, frankly people that we get in these meetings. I don't know that breakout meetings are going to be as compelling. I right exactly like we yeah. can like, certainly figure out if I can turn it on for these meetings. That's fine, but you know. I don't know if it's meaningful. That's all. Yeah, I think we I think we just want to start doing it to to be honest, yeah. Um I will I will put remarks in the doc so that my comments are are more clear. Yeah. I mean, one thing I'll say for this particular meeting time slot is not terrifically friendly to Europe. Dawn is up late here. And it's, well, not super late, but it's still dinner time. And, and it's definitely not friendly to Asia. So yeah. we'd want to have some around the clock, you know, things, different time slots. Yeah, so, so you know, what could happen is a uh, US East EMEA time slot and a US West APAC time slot. And we can probably find um, some balance there. Um, I think that I think that at least starting in this time slot will get uh, you know allow us to key in on some things that we might want to tweak if we expand to multiple meetings. 
Um, but I would agree with the whole, like Thursday is the funniest, like overly stacked meeting day for me. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure everyone's schedules are kind of crazy. So like less meetings are better. Um, but yeah, we do want to accommodate, but we should only try to accommodate if the need is actually there. So I'm going to actually have to drop off this call because um, an emergency just came up um, for me. All right. Hope everything's so, okay, man. Yep. Yep. Go for it. All right. So next up. Uh, so yeah, it says uh, Paris is going to look at um, uh, chatting with Sarah Novotny on some values and principles uh, topics, as well as um, Tim Hawken on uh, reviewer maintainership. Um, there was one more topic up for discussion that we had initially raised, which was the, um, which was talking about naming protocol for various projects. Um, I think this was posed as potentially our first topic for maintainer circle. Um, so I will put that on the notes too. Um, do other people have thoughts? Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so if you do have if you do have thoughts on, on potential topics, maybe we'll spin up a separate doc or um, something in the repo where people can request uh, topics for maintainer circle and we can do something like that. Oh, I had a topic. Yeah. Um it's not a fun topic though, but I, I hear this yeah. actually more than any of these other things that we're talking about currently. A lot of the stuff we talk about adds to the time commitment to maintainers but every single maintainer i've talked to especially this year has been saying that they are over subscribed essentially and um they're looking for ways to keep the project going <laughs> um and just kind of deal right now um without hurting the project Right? They're dealing with the backlog. They're trying to not lose people, but at the same time, they're trying to keep features going or deal with security issues that are coming up and just all the various things. And it's like, we can't maintain the level of like fostering new contributors and doing all the various things we need to do that our group actually talks about as being really important, good stuff to do at the same time. Cause uh, there's a lot going on and there's a lot being asked of maintainers right now. So how do you go into like yellow alert, <laughs> I guess, and take care of your project and not trash your project while you're taking care of things, I guess. That's what I'm hearing people talk about. <laughs> I no, I, I, I love it and I feel it too. Um, you know, I, I feel like every, every interrupt that we get, like sometimes you've got your schedule in line, like it's perfect. You're like, I know exactly what I'm going to do this week. And there's like one interrupt that comes and just throws the entire thing out of whack. Um, and yeah, and it's usually never just one. Um, so, and you know, when this happens across multiple projects and different venues and foundations, it, it's, yeah, it's super stressful. Um, so I, yeah, let's, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'd love to like support, support people with this. Cause this is like, this is really, this is really hard to figure out. And I feel like some projects aren't like doing well. I had to like set down my project for a couple months and that really sucked and it hurt the project and I don't know how to have done that better. I have put in the word that I think describes this and I think it's being able to build our projects for more resiliency. Yeah. 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 So I think being able to like start from that as a base to be able to say, what would it be like if we were considering resiliency as we were 
kind of looking at schedules and roadmaps and kind of like how how could I actually make this easier for everyone, including me, because I love this baby little project and I want it to succeed, but I also understand that my availability is really inconsistent right now. Yeah. Given that, what do we do next? Yeah, yeah I, think, I love that. I think inconsistent availability. Yes. I, I think yeah, I think one of the the trickiest parts of this is is um it becomes another interrupt, right? It becomes something that you have to like sit down and consider, um, at least for SIG release. And maybe this is actually a discussion for the time that we discussed this, right? Um, but, you know, for SIG release, we recently brought on two new technical leads and a program manager, right? And I think, you know, it's the first time that we've done, uh, or people have done a program manager, like embedded in a SIG. Um, so, there are growing pains and there's like an additional uh there's an additional overhead for like interrupts bringing people up to speed so that they can help you shift shift the workload right um so it's like it's like yes i know i need to do this thing or i know we as maintainers need to do this thing but right now it's another meeting or it's another set of meetings before we get to some reasonable outcome right totally and I think a lot of that is also looking at like, what are the priorities for the project? Like what could fall off and no one will, like no fairies will fall. And what things can we push off towards? Hey, perhaps in spring we could, um, and I guess I'm using more of like the program manager, like expectation of if we didn't do this, what would happen? And I think I've broken Steven, sorry. Yeah, no, it's my, uh, it's actually one of my new favorite questions. Like, is this important right now? <laughs> like, do we need to? Oh my um, God, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, you know, it, this is like internal gripes from the past. Like I think of, you know, I think of the potential things that we could have done in SIG PM and, and, and Kubernetes, right? And, you know, just hearing project, project roadmap. Right, <laughs> and having an idea of like what we were actually going to be able to deliver, uh, that comes from being able to aggregate the ideas of multiple maintainers, right, and have them deliver those things at on a certain timeline, right. So certainly, you know, for a large project like Kubernetes, um, I'm finding that there has been more activity by having a local program manager or a local pro PXME type uh, to help you with some of this stuff, because I think that maintainers in general um if you show up and you do the work you get the power um and that's a you know that's how it happens kind of often um but you're not necessarily always the best positioned person to do that thing right maybe you're an engineer yeah. who is like fairly organized like cool you're kind of like our pm person now and you're like whoa hold on I <laughs> like, i'm not sure i signed up for that um and you know, so there's there's a lot going on with with maintainers in general, where they're wearing maybe five hats that could be, you know, delegated out. Um, but also, delegating out takes time. So yes, I think this is an excellent topic to talk about. Yay! I want to be in this meeting so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we do. I mean, like, let's let's hype it up. You know, it's um, and we have to figure out times right when we're officially going to kick these things off um so soon? that was paris's question of when yeah because we is i think last we talked about what kickoff looks like we were like well let's just there was there is a want to do something for for kubecon and have that be like a kickoff event um but I think we should, I think we had talked about just getting started in September and look, we blinked September. and September is gone. <laughs> right? well, so um, you've got a couple different options here. You could track towards being able to take like the October 8th meeting um, for this particular group and saying, man, this is something we really want to do. You could promote it at the Tuesday, October 6th um, TOC meeting. And that kind of leads from there. And that, that means that you don't have to have a lot of momentum in order to be able to make this work. Alternatively, you can look at the 22nd of October. And that does, like, both of these things do get you something before KubeCon. I am just not sure about, like, the, um, the bandwidth that this group has. Yeah, I would lean towards something later 
uh, I would lean towards the 22nd meeting. Um, for myself, at least, I will have limited ability to uh, facilitate uh, all of this or some of these things with like all of my attention because I'm also, um, that'll be the point at which like KubeCon prep is already getting pretty crazy. Um, so we're working on program review stuff right now um, and it will only get deeper uh, as, as October goes on for me, so. Your assessment, because I think we do not take the amount of time that KubeCon and the amount of energy that KubeCon, even though it is virtual, um, is still taking from, from folks. Um, yeah. Um, I don't have a good answer here. And, and, you know, maybe it's, we wait, maybe it's, we wait, we get, you know, we get the conversations going on mailing lists. Um, we could be doing more to hype up the fact that we have a mailing list. I think a lot of the discussions that could happen on the contributor strategy mailing list are currently still happening on the TOC list, right? So I think the TOC list becomes this kind of like garbage bucket for anything to potentially discuss. Hey, there are votes in there. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> No, you are you you are accurate in that. Um, uh, we we do want to be able to have the signal of this reach people in a way that is meaningful. Yeah. Without, frankly, making another email for people to be able to deal with, and that's the balance there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am a big fan of not combining this into KubeCon because the I don't know, I've been on the soapbox for for months, but. The idea of combining everything around when everyone is physically going to be in a place is not the same as trying to combine everything around a virtual conference where we're sitting on video. It's not, it doesn't work. I actually checked our notes. We decided last time not to do it at KubeCon, so yeah. we're good. However, there is <laughs> a, um, I am going to use my, my chair hat for a second and poke into the content management <laughs> schedule for KubeCon. Um, Cause I believe we do have a session. Um, so hold on. Strategery. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. It's just the project paperwork one. It looks like Carolyn, you, Dawn and Josh are on that. Yep. Okay. All right. So maybe nothing to do there. I'm happy to, I would love to start something. I don't know what that something exactly looks like. And I, but I, I do think it's fine to start something small and see, um, at least get feedback. Um, I do worry about continuing to wait post KubeCon. Like we're gonna blink and KubeCon will be upon us as, as usual, um, but it, it is in November. So there's a bit of time that we could be doing stuff if we wanted to. I feel like there's always a KubeCon. You're either getting ready for it or recovering from it. So I feel like at some point we just have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we were just talking about KubeCon you the this. same way. We just pick a time that works for this program and we launch it. Yeah. We launch it when it makes sense for the program and not not necessarily worry about KubeCon. So, so Amy, the... Um, the next TOC meeting post October 6th would be the 20th. That one may be spoken for as far as like TOC meetings thing. Um, yeah, I, there's something in my mind about how like someone, someone has claimed that one. Um, okay. Also, I don't know if a TOC, like I would, I would highlight the fact that you want to be able to do this in your SIG updates for October the 6th, which is like, this is me plugging you all to get your slides in the end. Um, but I think being able to like actually like highlighting that this is something that you want to do, but not being sure about when exactly would be a good time for it might actually get some good input from TOC. Okay. All right. So yeah, we'll plan to plug on the October 6th meeting um, and maybe try to do something not for the 8th, but the 22nd, at least so we can have one more meeting here where we have all the chairs in attendance, potentially. Um, to, I don't want to make this decision, you know, for everyone. Um, well, note, the only thing that I've heard you guys really get fired up about is talking about oversubscribed maintainers. That is the one that has like 
like that lit everybody up. And that seems like a really easy conversation to have. Yeah. They're like, it's it me. It me. Yeah, exactly. It me. <laughs> like, it me. And, and so because of that, I want to be able to like, I, I want, I want to be able to have you scope this in a way that is valuable for you and valuable for the people that are going to be here as well. So if you say, hey, look, we do the oversubscribed maintainers as a conversation for the 22nd, you might get a lot of people showing up. Cool. Mm -hmm. You will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Josh has returned. Yep. Hey, Josh, while you were gone, we made decisions. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, the you're not are responsible good. for any of them because you weren't here. So good call. <laughs> no, the uh, to recap it's, the it's... conversation was really looking at um, the maintainer circle, kind of planning on tracking towards the twenty second for that. And the piece that has really kind of risen up as a a possible topic is talking about oversubscribed maintainers, burnout, and how do you take care of your project when you have inconsistent availability. Have I mischaracterized any of that, anyone? Wow. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> so the, uh, the follow-up is, if you can put that into your slides for the TOC deck, again, October 6th, dates and calendar are closer than they may appear. Um, that would be lovely because it'll get people excited and they know when to be able to come and have this conversation. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I think we're happy yep. here. And we should talk a little bit about governance before we leave. It's not, not any momentous. We're still churning through our content checklist. Um, if um, we don't have anybody on the call who might be looking for something to do, so I won't mention the unassigned items that we have. Um, the um, so I mean we're basically starting with all of the advisory documentation and then moving on to requirements and templates. Um, the um, um, so nobody's really working on the requirements or templates yet. Awesome. Uh, do we have, so we have six minutes left. I think we have six minutes left. We've got six minutes left. Um, is there any topic that uh, someone would like to raise before we go? Nope. Um, oh, I submitted the proposal for our SIG session to um, At KubeCon November, um, I haven't heard. Um, assume it's going to get accepted. Um, one of the things that I'll have to follow up with um, the CNCF folks on is what I proposed is highly interactive, and um, I, if we're using Entrato as a platform, which is what I've been given to believe that we are. Um, Highly interactive is not supported by Entrato. Um, and so we'll need to discuss how we would actually carry out um, the proposed uh, event. This has come up in, uh, for other talks. So if you want to start in a thread with um, you, uh, myself, Nancy, a few others, um, and yeah. Constance, if you have Constance's email, I can shoot it to you. Yeah. The, um, Okay. Um, the, yeah, because uh, it's just the thing is because, you know, the way it's proposed, which is a um, project paperwork session, right? You know, let us help you with your requirements and project organization and stuff. Um, what we need to cover is going to be very dependent on who shows up. And, you know, and this is the sort of session where if we have maintainers from six projects show up, that's a good showing, but we're not gonna know in advance whether these are mature projects looking at graduation or whether they are, you know, new projects looking to join the sandbox. And 
what we want to talk about is going to be very different depending on who it is that shows up. So um, this is, um, yeah, this moves towards like, is it possible to do a recorded session style situation? I would say, um, I would say do this, try to do this ahead of time because this is, again, this is coming up for, for other talks. Um, precede the question, right? Precede the question, get people to submit the kind of paperwork that they want to cover, right? And then you have a basis for building the, the session as opposed to getting caught off guard with um, anyone <laughs> potentially popping in, right? The, um, the problem is that we can't do that on what are likely gonna be video um, submission timelines. I mean, realistically, people are not going to know whether or not they're planning to attend the session a month out from the conference. Fair. Yeah, there is there is a bit of clairvoyance that's going to be required because the timelines are tied for everything. So um, yeah. just a suggestion, I would say um, it's because figuring out how to do the live thing is I don't think is a solved problem right now. Um, and I if I was thinking about the session, I would think about like, let's take, you know, how much time do we have? Let's take a small problem and maybe a large problem or small project, large project, medium project, two medium projects kind of kind of thing, and talk about different axes of, 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 um, of contributor documentation or maintainer documentation. See, um, I, was, I was thinking of doing things as creative as, um, you know, hey, let's have this five minute general information session and then say, okay, everybody who's here, meet us on the Zoom channel. Interesting. Yeah, let's, this is, I think this is turning into chair talk versus yeah. contributor strategy talk. So let's, let's offline it. Yeah, but. no, just so people know that that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah. The, um, um, so, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, when I wrote the session, I proposed it. I'm still geared to think about in-person events um, or events that are actually part of conferences that I run. Um, and thus have some control over the platform. So, um, <laughs> yeah, trust me, no. it, it's come up a lot in in the way yeah. some of the proposals are structured. I mean, not, not this is easy in other stuff. I'm dealing with you know another event that's supposed to be highly interactive, and I just found out that the platform we're using has a limit of nine people with live mics. Oh. And they were like, "Wait, oh. you need more than nine? And I'm like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> So yeah, we're trying to figure more. out our way around that. A few more, yeah. A few more. Yeah, they don't need to be live at the same time, but they need to be able to turn them on. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're struggling with technology. The um, we we have we have actually curse. reached we have actually reached the the stage when we genuinely have technology problems instead of people problems. The, um, <laughs> so, it, it's a rare thing. Most <laughs> most problems are people problems. The, we'll get um, through it. We'll get through yeah. it. All right. Um, so okay. we're at time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for hanging out. And thank you for the thoughtful discourse, as thanks, always. Thanks for taking over when I had to duck out. Of course. <laughs> Catch you all later. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye. Bye all. Thanks. Bye.